<laughs> and 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 you know uh, oh, you, repeat you that line okay you have people who say <laughs> slavery was not so bad and you know and 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 my uh great 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 grandfather wrote uh, you should try it sometime and then we'll talk. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I mean, yeah, really. That's a, that's a great answer. That's a great, that's a great answer. response. You should, try it. It. Yeah. you should try it sometime and yeah. then, then let's talk about, yeah. about how great slavery is. Mm -hmm. um, I was going to ask you, uh, because you're talking about um, uh, Henry finding his mother and, and being able to bring her up to Canada with him. Um, what do you know about what happened to the rest of his family since well, it's, since it's, he was so um, yeah. in, you know in, uh, it just he loved his family dearly and he put his freedom at risk for them. Um, so I guess uh, you know I wanted to know about his mother, about his brothers, his mm. wife's, yeah. both of his wives, yeah. his daughter. Well, um, his um his his wife Melinda and their daughter Mira Francis. Uh, was sold away, as I mentioned earlier, from him into Mississippi. And he, he kept looking for her when he made it to freedom in Detroit. And then he received a letter from her. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm saying there was communication between the enslaved and free people or, or runaway. Uh, lots of communication. Um, Where there's a will, there's a way. Where there's a will, there's a way. She, she, he got a letter. No, I don't know if Mel Melinda was literate, but he, re he got a letter from her telling him to stop looking for her because she had been sold to a planter. In this case, she said a French planter in Mississippi to be his concubine. And, um, and that was the end of that. And it, it, it just broke his heart. Yeah. And um, do they know what happened to no, her? No, we, we, we don't know what happened to her after that. Mm -hmm. We will keep looking. Mm -hmm. But it, but she, she was also thinking of him. Yeah, letting and, him go. And yeah, mm -hmm. and um, and contacted him. She wrote the letter to his mother. Not to him because maybe she wasn't sure where he was because you know she didn't know what um, had happened to him after he was sold into Texas. So she sent the letter to his mother in Kentucky, and his mother was able to communicate um, that message to him. Now his brothers, his brothers were were owned by Harriet, this slave girl who grew up. Harriet White, Harriet White, Harriet exactly. White, who yes. was a slave slave mistress. She and Henry were the same age, but she was the legal owner of Henry's mother and of her children. When Harriet grew up, she got married, and, and she and her husband moved into Missouri because Missouri was opening up. Kentucky was overcrowded. In, you know, They needed more land, so Missouri and some of what um, the states that were then called the Western states were opening up. So Harriet and her husband moved to Missouri and took the boys, took the sons. By then Henry had escaped or had been sold to somewhere else. So imagine the, the impact of that on uh, Mildred Jackson, his mother. She, you know, she, she, none of her boys are, you know, she's none of her lost. Sons are, are, have no, are, are close to no. Her she, she only had where they are. she only had one son left, and that was a son that she had from a man who was a free man. She only had that one son with her. This is a woman with seven sons, and she lost six six of them. So those boys went with Harriet and Harriet's husbands as slaves into Missouri. Um, and, but life is a funny thing. When Henry Bibb moved to, to Sandwich, Ontario, and started the newspaper, The Voice of the Fugitive, he had a habit of going down to the ferry stop in Windsor to meet the fugitives who would come off the boat from Detroit. And he would interview them. And he would publish their narratives in the newspaper. You know, um, you know Ali and Kwanzaa came off the boat, and they're originally from Missouri or, or wherever, and he'd, he'd have a little biography 
of, of these people who came off the boat. And so one afternoon he went down to the ferry stop and he started interviewing these three young men and they were his brothers. And um, he well, hadn't seen them till they were like, uh, when they were like eight or nine or ten when they went off to Missouri with the slave, slave mistress, but they were his brothers. And they were now in, you know, twenties, early twenties. Mm -hmm. and, um, and it was just incredible. And they talked about how they escaped from Missouri and, and, and made it to Detroit. And they had no idea that their eldest brother, Henry Babe, ha had made it out of slavery, was now living in, in Canada West, as it was in Cobb, which is Ontario. And he took them to their mother. <laughs> can you imagine that mother, reunion? Can you imagine? Yeah. It's just one of those beautiful stories, right? And he published it in The Voice of the Fugitive. He took them to their mother, his mother, and he said there was great rejoicing. Great rejoicing. She had no idea she would ever see, them, ever yeah. see her sons again. And here she's with, well, Henry had redeemed her from slavery, so she was living with Henry, but three more of her sons showed up at the right place. Now, was that a coincidence or was that divinely ordered? <laughs> so much of his life seems yeah. to have that um, uh, synchronicity yeah. to it. And uh, it's incredible. Yeah. Um, I, I think that, I think that that's all the questions I okay. have for now. Do you have anything that you want to, like you feel compelled to, to tell people about your, your studies about him or to encourage people to um, find more out about him or where they can find yeah. more information about him? Well, um, yes. Both Henry and Mary Bibb were named the Persons of National Historic Significance by the Canadian federal government in 2005. And so the, the research, uh, it was my research that was used um, to uh, write the biographical information about Mary and, and Henry. And this beautiful plaque monument is at the, the old courthouse in Sandwich, the old town of Sandwich. It's very beautiful. It's set it's in a park-like setting, and it's very big. It's in both French and English. So people can go down and, and look at the, the plaque. And um, I know that the state of Kentucky or the Friends of Henry Bibb in Kentucky are planning on having a, a Henry Bibb trail in Kentucky. I mean, in, to, to plaque and name all the places that he lived and worked and found the farms on which he, he was enslaved. At the Gatewood Plantation in, in Kentucky, they have done archaeological work. Uh, um, the state has done archaeological work at the Gatewood Plantation. We also, uh, a book just came out, it's called The Fluid Frontier, published by Wayne State um, University Press, edited by Carlin. Smart Frost and Vita Tucker. The subtitle is The Underground Railroad in the Detroit Borderlands. And um, so it's just hot off the press, February 2016. I have a chapter in that book on Henry and Mary Bibb and the voice of the fugitive as an abolitionist newspaper, the influence of that newspaper in, in the Detroit Borderlands and beyond. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Um, I think uh, I would love to sit here for another four days and and tap into your wisdom and your knowledge about him. Um, and I I want to thank you for sharing um, uh, a little tip of the iceberg uh, with me and with uh, with whoever is going to watch this. Um, uh, and. Uh, and we would like to 
make sure that uh, we make mention of, of your work and um, include you in our project and um, in any way that we can and keep um, keep his name in uh, or bring his name more in the forefront and um, so that we can we can learn from him and and um, be inspired by him yeah. as a as a as another giant. Yeah, yeah. Um, he knew he he was just incredible, and you know I think people say well, how did he die? Uh, you know according to the records, he had a fever, uh, and and he died. I mean then in 1854 they weren't telling you <laughs> exactly what killed people. Uh, you had a fever, right? You died. Well, I said slavery killed him. Yeah. <laughs> it was slavery that killed him. You know, here's a man who in his 20s was hiding out in swamps in water and dogs, you know, barking at him and, you know, I snap mean, biting yeah. him and being whipped over and over again. I mean, how much can the body take? Yes. 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 And, and the, you know, his mental health being um, impacted by the loss of his family. Oh my God, it, it was just awful. Just awful. So it's, slavery killed him. It's amazing that he survived and, and, th and actually flourished yeah. as much as he did. Yeah. Mm. And, and I think when, when you go through those ordeals, then you appreciate life more. It becomes precious. And every day is, every day you want to do something spectacular. 